Right, well done on uh, buying your BVAC. Hope you're going to get many hours out of it and hope you're happy with it. So, um, the BVACs that we've developed over time is uh, gone through various stages of prototypes, and uh, now you are buying the, the product of all these school fees that we've had along the way. Um, so far, currently in the industry, it's the lightest in the market. Uh, you can take it up into a roof. It's small enough that it can go through a manhole and um, it's not heavy to carry. Uh, it's durable, it's quite hardy. They talk about the unbreakable plastic. We'll have to see about that. Um, but it, so far it's the best product that we've been able to come with, uh, uh, come up with. And um, we use it on a daily basis. We've got guys out doing bee removals every single day of the week. Um, ours so far, we've, the original first prototype has probably done about 65 removals already um, and that's in the, in the last uh, month or two, so it's done well. We've got a second, second uh, the, the later model which is this, what you're getting out now, it's a more improved model, it, it sits more snugly compared to the first variant that we made and um, that one's doing quite well as well, in fact it's actually the better of the two. So we're improving things as we go along and before we get going on explaining how this uh, BVAC works I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our videos, the Bush Salt Bees uh, YouTube channel um, and you'll get other useful hints and tips as you go along the way. I'm going to be doing a video on um, when, we use, when we use this BVAC at a removal so you'll be able to see how we do it as well and how we use the machine. So um, if you subscribe, you'll be able to have access to that, that video as well. And then give us a thumbs up just to let us know that we're happy. If you've got any comments, any questions, comment below on this video and we can answer straight away. Um, it's much easier than trying to get hold of us on WhatsApp. And then also other people can also see your, your question. And we can try and make sure that we answer everyone at the same time and everyone gets that info. Right. Good. Let's get straight into it. Um, I've got three here that are going out um, today, in fact they're getting shipped out, uh, so you're going to receive one of these, and let's just move these two off to the side, so that we're dealing with one, right. alright, good, so obviously the box is not included, <laughs> okay, but um, when you receive your BVAC, um, you're going to be receiving uh, the BVAC, BVAC in a box like this. It will be packaged in a probably a cardboard box if it's not getting dropped off with you. And um, you will also get two pipes with it. These are pretty much standard uh, creepy crawly pipes, but they have been chosen for a specific reason. The inside, um, these, the edges are rounded on the inside, and uh, there's not much space for the bees to to grab onto. So we've specifically tried and tested many different types of creepy crawly pipes and these are the best. Um, the reason for the different colors, the one is more rigid which is connected to the pump and the other one which is more flexible uh, is the one that you handle and you vacuum inside the inside the, um, the site with. But I'll get to that. Oh, is it I'll get to that shortly. Right. So when you open up your BVAC, you're going to have a cartridge. Um, you can see there's a there's a pipe uh, vacuum section here where you plug your pipe into. The cartridge has got a lid. Fairly simple. You can see inside the the cartridge, it's literally just a, a container with drilled holes through it. And uh, on the lid itself, you'll see there's a bit of a groove over here. And that's fitted for the pipe. All right, so make sure you get that in the right direction. All right, so that's the cartridge. We do have spare ones of these available, or you can go and make them yourself. Uh, so we do have spare ones like this available, and uh, you can order them from us. We'll just courier them to you. They're quite light, uh, durable, and they've got the fitting here that you can actually vacuum the bees up. Um, they're nice to have if you have uh, a really big 
package form and you can vacuum uh, one lot up first, take a cartridge out, put a new cartridge in and vacuum up the next form. Um, so it's nice having a second cartridge if you want. Uh, if you are more experienced and you've done quite a few bee removals already and you know how to keep these little buggers cool inside here and keep the air ventilation going, um, which is more advanced, uh, quite a technical thing. But we'll get to that at some stage and we'll make another video about that. So another reason for subscribing to the channel. Alright, so you've got the cartridge and then you've got the bee vac. Um, it's also fairly simple, motor inside, uh, got a whole bunch of warnings, uh, you know being the, uh, the reasonable man, you, you know all the drills, the safety equipment, PPE equipment, uh, make sure you've got head, um, your muffs and all that type of thing. Right, so um, in addition to the beaver, you obviously got your, your extension cable over here, uh, it goes through the, through the beaver. And uh, it also gives you the little sign there tells you how many decibels the noise that this thing makes. Um, it's all acceptable levels. It's been approved. It's got a standard plug on here. It goes into the motor. Just make sure that it's plugged in to the motor on the inside. So that's that's it. When you unpack your, your BVAC, you pretty much get, get the BVAC, the cartridge, and the two pipes. With obviously the cable attached to it already. Okay. The next thing we're going to get to is the uh, the assembly. In terms of putting the thing together, um, you want to make sure that that it all fits together nicely. That it creates a proper vacuum inside the bee vac. Uh, it sucks in the bees. Uh, it's been designed. It's got a specific amount of holes that we've drilled over here. So this wasn't just a random drilling of holes into a container and hoping that it's going to suck the bees in. If you drill too many then you're going to hurt the bees uh, because they're going to get vacuumed in the vacuum is going to be too high if you drill too little it's not going to vacuum the bees in and you're going to have bees falling out your pipe again at the end of the day so this has been trial and error over a whole bunch of swarms that we've done over time and we've got the exact amount of holes that we need to drill and have for vacuuming up the bees right it's fairly simple uh, you've got the entrance, so you've got, I spoke earlier on about making sure that you've got this little arc here on your lid, on top of your, your pipe entrance, alright, and um, then you can have this pipe entrance either side of the of the VVAC, you can have it on that side, or you can have it on that side, it doesn't matter, it depends on what you prefer, because now you're going to have quite a bit of air blowing out of here, so if you're going to be vacuuming bees over here, um, your your pipe you want you want your pipe on this side to vacuum the bees on that side. Okay, but the air you don't want to have the air blowing into your hive or into your removal site and uh, upsetting your bees. You're gonna get really grumpy bees if you got uh, if you got this air blowing into them the whole time. And then also once you start vacuuming and you get the queen inside, remember those pheromones are gonna be coming out of the out of the exhaust and you're going to get the bees moving from the site to where the queen is uh, and her, her smell is coming out of so um, it's best to have those fumes blowing in a direction that is not bothering the bees or, or the removal site okay so that's why you can just change it whichever side suits you you can vacuum bees on this side and have the fumes blowing out that side it's up to you all right when you are vacuuming you've got to make sure that it's standing upright okay don't leave it lying down on its side or up like that or whatever it may be because the way that the holes are designed uh, they're on the side and there's no holes on the bottom the bees when they get vacuumed in they crawl and they clump on the bottom okay uh, sometimes they do clump underneath the lid but uh, that will be only after a while after having done the removal so most of the time you've got your bees on the bottom and if you've got this cartridge lying on the side, the bees will actually fill in the holes and block the holes. And then you're not getting much of a vacuum. So you want to make sure that your bee vac is upright at all times while you're busy using it. Okay. Uh, putting the pipes in, like I said earlier on, you want to make sure that you get your, your more rigid pipe uh, in first. It's got a nice little, little fit there. It's got a bit of a tight fit, which is great. It doesn't come out. 
Um, and also once a vacuum is running, it does keep the pipe in as well. It sucks it in nicely together. Um, and then you just join the, the flexible pipe on the end of that. And then you can vacuum as you want. You can get other pipes. You can add on pipes um, if you buy them at uh, shops like like the pool, pool shop or game or, or macro and that type of thing. You can on, add on pipes. But remember that's going to affect your your vacuum pressure. The more pipes you add, the, your, your pressure is going to drop because now your pump's going to have to work harder to suck those bees through that long, long pipe. So I recommend just staying with the two pipes and that we found has got us into pretty much all the situations that we need to get into and we do a lot of bee removal. So I'd go along and stick with the two pipes. If you do shorten it and you only use one pipe, remember the, the flexible pipe doesn't fit inside here. Um, it's designed that the, the blue pipe fits inside here, so you'll be end up vacuuming with a rigid pipe. Not a major train smash, but um, it's not as flexible as the, as the light blue pipe. Alright, so um, just bear those things in mind if you're going to play around with that type of thing. So, when it comes to assembly, plug that one in, plug this one in. You go along, you plug your plug into an electric point. There is no switch here. So as soon as you plug it in, um, it will switch on and uh, it will vacuum straight away. All right. Uh, we like to have one of those roll-up extensions where there's a switch next to us and we control it with that switch. Um, perhaps at a later stage, we might end up having an integrated switch that we'll be able to switch on and off at some stage. Uh, for for the purpose of having no live wires and having it all moist, uh, moist protective that we don't have open wires and all that type of stuff, we've just simply kept the units closed as is. That's why we don't have a switch inside. Okay. Um, right, so that's the assembly. We'll go on to the usage. The usage of the, of the VVAC. Um, the airflow, the way that it works is obviously when it vacuums up, it vacuums air through here and it goes into the into the bee vac and then it comes out the exhaust. Remember what I said to you, make sure that the direction of the exhaust is facing in the direction that you want it and not into your removal site. Just a little note over here, you'll see that this little round section sits on top of the bee vac. So there's a, the gap between the bee vac and the cartridge is exactly where your pipe goes in. Okay, so just bear that in mind. When it comes to using the BVAC, um, and you're going to use it now in a site, uh, you generally want to go along and you get your swarm clump of bees. You want to vacuum on the outsides, any stray bees away from the main clump, you vacuum them up first, and, um, and then you work your way towards the swarm. Right? If you are um now going to start vacuuming on the big swarm you want to actually vacuum from the bottom up okay don't try and vacuum from the top because what's going to happen is that whole scaffolding that they've got going over there you're going to disrupt that and you're going to have bees dropping and falling onto the ground if there are bees on the ground of the site where you are working um let them walk up back to the clump or walk up onto the wall and vacuum them off there don't try and vacuum bees off the floor because you're going to get sand going into your motor, into your bee vac, and you, that sand, when it comes in with speed into your bee vac, you're actually going to kill those bees because it's like tiny little bullets flying into the bee vac and killing your little bees. All right, so it's not great. You get, you're pretty much sandblasting your bees. So you want to stay away from vacuuming up sand. The motor is strong enough. It's a very robust outdoor pump used for gardens and all that type of thing. So it is a very strong pump, it can handle the, the dust and sand and stuff like that to a certain degree. Um, but for the sake of the bees, you don't want to go and vacuum up any sand or any dirt. Once you eventually get to the point of emptying your bees into your hive, you don't want to empty all your all the dust and gunge and all the rubbish in there as well. So you want to have a clean vacuum and only vacuum from a swarm hanging from the comb or on the on the wall or whatever it may be. Okay. Um, the other nice thing that I, we found works quite nicely is if you've got 
maybe a, a lid from a bee box um, and you've got the bees onto the lid you vacuum them off the smooth surface the bees can't hold on and it goes much easier and faster okay so you want to try and vacuum the bees off a smooth surface if they may be in a cupboard let them cr crawl onto the wall onto the cupboard door where there's a bit of enamel paint and you vacuum them off there it comes off quite easily when you vacuum them off bricks and tiles and stuff like that there's lots of little grips that they can hold on and it's a lot more difficult to vacuum them up okay so that's just in terms of vacuuming the bees up all right once you've gone along and you have finishing finish vacuuming your bees um, you keep the motor running unplug the, the pipe and just take a nice big sponge and put it into the hole of the hole of the pipe where the where the of the bee vac where the pipe goes in. You put a nice big sponge inside there and it'll block it up. Then you switch off the motor. Alright, you want to have this really blocked up before you switch off the motor. We found that even if we switch off the motor, not many bees come out. Excepting if it's a hot day and they're still busy flying around and stuff, you'll get a couple flying out. But prevention's better than cure. So you go along and plug it first, then switch off your motor. All right. Then you can take your cartridge out. Once it's plugged here with your sponge, you can take out your cartridge. You can put it in a nice cool spot. Remember, this is a black container, so it attracts heat. If you're going to have it in the sun, you're going to cook your bees to death. That's the last thing that you want. All right. So you go and put it in a nice cool spot while you just quickly finish up and get your comb onto the frames or whatever it may be. Every so often, what I recommend is that you uh, put your cartridge back inside, switch it on for a couple of minutes, unplug it, and let the airflow go through the through the cartridge. You want to give the bees every so often. You want to give them some airflow and keep them cool. Right, that's the name of the game. If there's anything that you do, the most important thing is airflow and keeping the bees cool. Right, especially on hot days. Uh, cooler days you can get away with quite a bit but on the hot days especially you need to give them airflow and keep them cool otherwise your bees will die and you'll get home with a clump of dead bees. In terms of transporting your bees um, you can transport them inside the cartridge or you can move them straight away into your box. All right? You can only move them from your cartridge into your box once they have calmed down a bit inside the cartridge if it's still during the day. So you need to have a good couple of minutes of them being inside here, at least half an hour or whatever it may be. Um, otherwise, you can transport them in this, obviously with a sponger, preferably on the back of the bucky, or if you've got a car, you can do it inside your car. Remember to drive with your suit on. Um, whenever you're transporting bees, you drive with your suit on for safety reasons, obviously. If you have an accident and the paramedics need to get to you or something like that, uh, and you don't have a suit on, you've got trouble. Okay. So you have to travel with your bee suit on. But you can transport them inside here. What I often do is I just take them inside the cartridge, put them on the passenger seat, put the aircon on and let the aircon blow onto the box while I'm busy driving with it. We have developed a transporting lid that actually comes underneath this one over here, um, which will actually be motorized and plugged into a cigarette lighter for transporting the bees. Stay tuned for another another video. We'll we'll share that on another video on how to transport your bees with the new lid. Okay, but for now, the standard bee vac comes along with the standard top lid, and um, the transporting lid will be ordered separately if you want any of those. Okay, but generally we transport them on the passenger seat with the aircon blowing on shirt, and they are quite happy. All right, if you are going to tip them out into your box, ideal is to do them. In the uh, very late afternoon or early evening um, when it's not too cold and not too not too light so it must be dark enough but it mustn't be cold in the night um, you simply go along you open your box you've got your couple of frames here in the middle with your with your um, with your brood on you take out three or four frames take your your bee back cartridge go along you've got your sponge here remember give it one bump open it up they'll be all sitting at the bottom there quite standard and you just tip them in bang them off 
take it away put your car your your frames back into the box and we close up again and generally in the evening remember the bees are going to be crawling they're not going to be flying um, unless you've got a white light on you don't want to use a white light make sure your head torch has got a red light on it and uh, if we found it works very very well we've got um, we're sitting with a good I'd say 80 80 odd percent success rate now with our removals of the bee stain right we haven't had uh, a swarm die on us for for a long time right in the beginning when we were still learning it was sad and we had that but um, from time to time we do have the odd swarm swarming off but it's not due to the transporting and the, and the actual bee back situation um, it's normally new swarms that don't have established comb and everything like that and they're not happy to adapt the comb inside the box all right so that's in terms of transporting so you can transport it either in the cartridge on the on the front seat or on the back of the bucky or you can go along and tip them into the box and just transport them inside the box make sure that you remember to plug the hole of your your bee box um, before you tip the bees in otherwise they're going to be pouring out the bottom okay when you get home don't forget to unplug the hole of your bee box um so let your bees out and make sure they get uh, a bit of fresh air remember there's a very limited amount of time inside the in, that the bees can be inside containers like this especially inside the box if it's a big swarm the time span is going to be very short so they're going to overheat and they need air and ventilation all right if it's a smaller swarm you've got a little bit more time experience kind of only teaches you that uh, we found with the bigger swarms you want to push it longer than two and a half hours with a smaller swarm you can go up to four hours but it's a give and take you, you, your your judgment will take over in your experience now we're going to go on to the care and maintenance of the of the bee vacs it's very simple everything is all all this tupperware material so the whole cartridge you can actually wash off with warm water we do often get a bit of uh, um, wax residue on the lid here from the bees sitting on the lid once you're transporting them they gather up and they hang on the lid sometimes I found that they actually hang on the lid and you can actually shake them into the box but most of the times I just like to bang them off and then empty them so you do get a bit of residue inside the inside the cartridge and it's a matter of warm water and uh, warm soapy water you can wash it off quite comfortably make sure you rinse the soap off they, they don't go well with sunlight soap um, unfortunately so just make sure you rinse it off nicely the pipes um, you want to run some warm warm water through them as well just to get the bee uh, the, the honey out the honey residue a lot of the bees remember once you give them that first smoke um, they go along and drink honey and then they've got honey on them and you're removing you're cutting honey and all that type of stuff so you're gonna get honey going inside the pipes and you're gonna find if you don't keep your pipes clean uh, the bees will actually get stuck inside the pipe and hang on the pipe and you won't your why is it need no suction okay so make sure you keep your pipes clean and uh, that reminds me of a tip I'll give it to you at the end of the video hang tight for the for the tip at the end um, so keep the pipes clean warm water the bee back itself you can take a cloth with warm water and soap and just wipe it down make sure you wipe your cables and stuff like that uh, be careful getting any water near the electric point there's another plug on the inside make sure you don't get any water inside there if you do by mistake just leave it out to dry for a, for a good day or two um, the motor itself warm cloth damp cloth it doesn't mustn't be wet just wipe it off nicely to get all the residue off that okay and uh, inside the container so it's fairly easy and simple to clean um, there's nothing really technical to it um, right yeah for the tip uh, when you are vacuuming your bees from time to time they like to get a bit stubborn so we go along we have our, our pipe plugged in and uh, we are vacuuming our bees now we've just vacuumed up a nice big clump of bees and you'll see that inside this pipe it's semi clear so you can actually see the bees going you can know whether you've got bees going in but you've got now a clump and they've decided they're going to hang on tight inside there especially if you're getting a messy hive removal and quite a bit of honey and sticky stuff around it starts getting sticky inside your pipe 
you want to get these buggers through. All that we do is we take the, the pipe and we hold it onto the exhaust for a second or two and it blows air through the pipe and pushes the bees into the bee bag. Right, it's quite safe. We haven't had any bees get hurt or damaged or injured in the process and it just gets it unblocked. So if you want to unblock your pipe, that's a good way of doing it. Right, so the important thing to remember, nothing lives forever. The more you use your motor, the, uh, the shorter the lifespan, right? They are quite hardy, like I said before. Our first prototype using this motor has actually been going for 60 odd removals at the moment. Um, and it's doing well, still very strong. And we've been running it for extended periods just to test it. And when I say extended periods, I'm talking about two hours at a time. And we've been trying to uh, test the endurance of the motors. So, so far it hasn't let us down. But we just need to bear in mind that um, the more kilos you put on your car, the closer you get to doing your service. Um, and if you're going to run this, the longer you run this motor, the shorter the lifespan. So try and bear that in mind. Um, if you've got done the, the, the removal, you've sucked up the bees, switch it off, take a cartridge out, put it in a shady spot, and um, then come back in 10 minutes time, put the cartridge back in, switch it on and let it run for a little bit just to cool down the bees. Don't leave it running, 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 running for, for an hour on end for nothing. All right, that can uh, shorten the lifespan of your motor. You want to make sure that this thing lasts a long time. You've gone and paid good money for it. You want to go and look after it. Good luck with your, your bee removals. If there's anything, remember, comment below the video. And um, we'll try and answer all the comments as best as, as we can. Let us know what you think of the motor. Like I said, it's nice and simple, sweet, it's light, durable, and uh, it should get you hours and hours of removals. Let us know how long yours lasts. And send us some uh, some videos of what, what yours your removal looks like with your new beaver. Hours to go all these damn holes.